everybody, it's Allison with the Rochester Museum and Science Center. Today I have a fun at home science activity I wanted to share with you guys. Something that's really easy to do, doesn't make a big mess, and you probably have everything you need right in your kitchen cupboard. To get started, what you're going to do is you need seven glasses, cups, plastic cups, um, something that you can see through preferably for this experiment. The experiment we're doing today is called walking water, or what I like to call the walking rainbow. Uh, we're going to explore primary colors, secondary colors, and capillary action. To get started, all you need to do is place the seven cups in front of you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then, in the first, third, fifth, and seventh cup, what you're going to do is fill them up about three quarters of the way with water. My water is room temperature. It's in a tea kettle just because it's easy to pour from. But we're going to fill those odd number cups just right about three quarters of the way, almost full. The other materials you're gonna need for this activity are the basic food coloring. And you're only gonna need the primary colors. We've got red, yellow, and blue. And believe it or not, we're gonna make a rainbow with just three colors. The next step, open up your food coloring and you're gonna add five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine, ten, ten drops of food coloring. Red goes into the first cup. Give that a little swirl here. We'll put yellow in the third cup. Again, you want to try and do the same number of drops in each of the cups. I'm going to try to do about 10 because I want the colors to be really vibrant so you guys can see them at home. Put yellow in the center here. And then I've got blue down on the end. Blue is going to go in my fifth cup. Again, same number of drops. Five, six, seven, eight nine and ten and last but not least we're gonna put red again all the way down in our seventh cup so I'm just using a spoon to stir the food coloring around a little bit before you mix colors though make sure you wipe off the excess because you don't want to mix colors ahead of time Got the blue and the yellow all right so now we have a really colorful set of cups. The next thing you're going to need, basic paper towels. I prefer for this experiment the kind where you can kind of uh, like select a smaller size. So what you're going to do is rip about half of a normal size sheet off. Then you're going to take your half sheet of paper towel and fold it. I learned this this way was called the hot dog style way as opposed to hamburger which is like this. So hot dog style fold lengthwise, right? right down the middle, and then you're gonna to wanna to do that again. Fold that right like that. You're gonna do one of these for each of the gaps between your cups of water. These are gonna act as the bridges so your water can walk across from one cup into the other. Now's a great time to create a hypothesis. What do you think is going to happen when we complete this experiment? I've got my little bridges all prepped and ready to go. You want to take a bridge and you're going to kind of fold it in half just a little bit like this. And then you're going to place one end into your cup, just like so. And then with your other bridges, continue along the same pattern. So repeating by placing one of your paper towel bridges in between each of the gaps between the cups. Now this experiment happens pretty quickly. As you're watching at home, you can probably start to see some changes and make some observations already. Bring this guy just a little closer. You don't want your paper towel sticking too high up out of the cup. So when you put them in, you wanna just make sure that the top is kind of right, right flush with the top of the glass. the last one here. Alrighty, so as we place our very last bridge here, we can start to make some observations about what is happening around us with this walking water or walking rainbow experiment. As you can see, the yellow is already off to the races here, starting to work its way up the paper towel bridge 
getting close to the top right here, and we see blue starting to do the same thing. Red, you can't see it quite as much, but it is starting to climb that paper towel and make its way to the very top. So what's gonna happen when that water climbs to the top of the paper towel, and how is it doing it? These are some great questions. Stay tuned, and we're gonna see how this experiment works out and figure out how it happens. All right, friends, we are about five minutes into our walking rainbow science experiment. And as you can see, as I move the camera down along these seven cups here, is that we're actually starting to see some of the color moving and the water moving from these cups across the bridges. And like the yellow here is already starting to make its way down into the empty cups. Same with the blue and the red here on the end and on this end. Hi everybody, welcome back. It's been about 45 minutes since I first started my walking rainbow experiment and I am super excited to share my results with you. If you remember when we first got started, we only poured water in glasses one, three, five, and seven. As you can see now, there is water in glasses two, four, and six. Down at the bottom of this one here, between red and yellow, we're starting to see those two primary colors mix and forming orange, a secondary color. In glass number four, we're slowly starting to see a little bit of green water forming. Again, the mixing of these primary colors, the yellow and the blue. Down here at the end, in glass number six, we're seeing the blue and the red mix to create the secondary color, purple. So we've learned about the primary and the secondary colors, but how is this happening? How is the water moving without me pouring it into the even number glasses. That, my friends, is a process we call capillary action. Capillary action is when water moves against certain forces, even against gravity sometimes, through very narrow spaces and is able to move upwards. This is the same process that helps plants and trees have water move from their roots all the way up to the tippy top of their, their branches or their leaves. In our experiment here, the paper towels these bridges here are fibrous. They have little gaps in them. It's through these gaps that the water is able to move using capillary action from this cup across and then down into the empty cup. So the real question though is how does liquid or in our case water do this? That's a great question and it involves three different forces. We've got cohesion, adhesion, and surface tension. Lots of big words, vocabulary words that mean a few different things and that describe Water. Water, as you know, is a molecule. It's made of hydrogen and oxygen. And water, in science, we think of it as a sticky molecule. Water molecules like to hang out with other water molecules. So when they're all together in this glass, they're hanging on, they're holding on next to each other. And then as they start to move up the paper towel, even in that motion, they like to stay together. The force of adhesion is at play here as well. Adhesion is when a molecule is sticking to something other than itself. In this case, water molecules aren't sticking to just each other because if they were, they'd stay in the glass. They're also sticking with the paper towel, adhering to the paper towel, if you will, and moving across and down into the other cup. This happens as the molecules kind of move. They're like almost like a chain. As one moves up, the others kind of follow in place. Remember that process of cohesion? They like to be together. So adhesion is pulling them, cohesion is keeping them following in suit and staying together. The third force that's at play here, and a lot of times when we talk about water in science, is surface tension. Surface tension refers to water molecules that are more closely bound together right at the surface, making the top of the water more tight and dense than the rest of the water. Surface tension holds the water together as the top, as it moves up during capillary action, holding the water molecules like almost like a drawstring or pulling them along. So we've got surface tension pulling them along. Adhesion is having the water molecules sticking to the paper towel and moving slowly like a chain all the way across. And cohesion is the force that's keeping these water molecules wanting to follow suit and to stick together. That, my friends, is capillary action. I'm gonna stick around here and wait and watch the rest of this walking rainbow happen in about, I don't know, maybe another hour, hour and a half. I think we're gonna see the full effects. Thanks for joining me. I'm Allison with the Rochester Museum and Science Center, and I'll see you next time.